leave the house. And we have other men because of their wives. When they are going to work, that's a breakthrough. <laughs> when they close, God help me. Let your angels go with me. <laughs> you know, when he's out of the house, he has his peace of mind. When he comes to fire. But that is not you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So submit unto your own husband. Submit unto your own husband. And submission most of the time is expressed in the way you address your husband. Especially in situations that is not convenient to you. Are you getting it? That is where your submission is tested. There are women that when everything is fine, oh, they are good, smiling. The day something happens and they don't like it, words that will fly out of their mouth, you'll be shocked. You know, so your submission is not tested when everything is moving rosy for you, when everything is moving all nice. No! When things you don't like begin to happen, when your husband does something you don't like, when something inconvenient to you happen, that is when your submission is tested. The way you address it, the way you handle it, the words that come out of your mouth. You know, and let me tell you, the way God made we men, no man wants his manhood to be devalued. And what I mean by that is that no matter what the man has done, if you begin to speak words that makes him look like a foolish man, even if all the anointing is on him, he might lose control. And that's the truth. Are you getting it? That is the truth. Every man wants to be respected. No matter what he has done, every man wants to be, I mean, it is, it is an inner, inner demand of every man. That is how we get our satisfaction. When you know your wife respects you. You know, and so, what, one way the devil, you know, destroys people's home through their wives is, you know, influencing them to speak words they don't have to speak. And you know words are very powerful. Words are the most powerful weapons in the world. That is why I can walk up to somebody and slap him. He may get mad and you know, for some time it's over. But I can say one word to that person and it, it might hurt him for years. I was once listening to a man of God who said something that when he was in school, I think he wasn't very good academically. And one day his teacher looked at him and said, you, you, I don't know what is wrong with you. you. You are good for nothing. And that word stayed with him until he was about, I think, 28 years. It sank into his spirit and he accepted that he was good for nothing. So nothing good was coming out of his life until he got born again. And he started reading the Bible and he saw that he wasn't good for nothing. Today, he's a public speaker in the world. Are you getting the point? So words are powerful, negative or positive. And so wives, beware the words that comes out of your mouth. Where things you don't like happen. I tell God for the grace give it to me as a pastor. And because of that, a lot of husbands talk to me about what they go through in the house. And most of them is traceable to the words of their wives. A man was torn into pieces because the wife looked at him and said, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Just that, who do you think you are? Just that. Who do you think you are? You know, so words are powerful. And wives must be aware of the words they speak. You see, the point is that submission is of the heart. Submission comes from the heart. You understand? Now, if you are faking it, it won't last. And so if you don't have that heart, you cry to God for it. Look, God will touch your heart and he will remove that stony heart and give you a heart of flesh. You understand? So you cry to God for that heart. When it is from your heart, it, it flows naturally. 
You, you don't force to do it. Like, your husband will do something and everything you do is, okay, pastor said we should submit. I won't talk. I won't, I won't talk. I won't. Father, help me. I won't talk. I will devil you a liar. I won't talk. Now, you see, you are struggling. The thing is not you. It's, 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 it's not in you. So the flesh is struggling. And when you can't take it anymore, you explode. <laughs> you know, but when it is of the heart, even when the man does something wrong, oh boy, the Bible says, women, look unto Sarah, your mother. Who respected her husband so much that she called him Lord? You think Abraham never did anything wrong? How would you feel if your husband went somewhere with you and he introduced you as his sister? Can you take that? <laughs> but Abraham did that to Sarah. He did, I mean, it was a serious case. He said it, and the king took Sarah, and he was going to sleep with her, and Abraham did not talk. If God had not intervened, the king would have been sleeping with Abraham's sister, who was his wife. And Abraham didn't do one thing to save the situation. He was afraid of his life. Sarah, for me to die, let somebody sleep with you. Your husband says these words to you. And yet the Bible says, he called him Lord. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. So understand that the Holy Spirit is there to help you as a woman. The Holy Spirit is there to help you. And so you need to depend on the Holy Ghost to help you become that wife that God wants you to become. That why that God wants you to become. The word submission is very, very important. Don't fake it. Don't try it. Make sure it is part of you. If your heart is not that hard, go to God. Go down on your knees. Cry to God. Lord, you know me. I'm not submissive. Father, forgive me. But Lord, I come to you. Father, touch my heart. Lord, give me that heart. Give me that heart. Make me that woman. And before you realize, it's flowing out of you. You know, and, and when you see, when you are faking it, you do it with pain. You know, it, it pains you, you feel it because it's not part of you. But when it becomes part of you, when it is of the heart and it's flowing, you enjoy it. It flows naturally.